Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Good evening. 
Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to, to Almighty God, God and you, my brothers and sisters, and in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who, is fa who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, Look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, in their thirst for water, the people grumbled against Moses, saying, Why did you ever make us leave Egypt? Was it just to have us die here of thirst with our children and our livestock? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? A little more and they will stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go over there in front of the people, along with some of the elders of Israel, holding in your hand as you go, the staff with which you struck the river. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock in Horeb. Strike the rock and water will flow from it for the people to drink. This Moses did in the presence of the elders of Israel. The place was called Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled there and tested the Lord saying, is the Lord in our midst or not? The word of the Lord. the people 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews use nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and, would he, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket, and the cistern is deep, and where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this cistern and drank from it himself with his children and his flocks? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you people say that the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand, because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. 
And indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking with you. Many of the Samaritans of that town began to believe in him. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word. And they said to the woman, We no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Stanson with you there, Tom. <clears throat> Sometimes we get a little congested up here. I'm intrigued by this reading tonight. Of course, I'm paid to say that. That was a joke. We're really slow to the uptick on some of these jokes. But I'm intrigued by this reading tonight for a pretty simple reason. It becomes clear pretty quickly as Jesus is talking to that woman at the well that he's not really talking about thirst in the way that we normally think about it. When we're thirsty, we go to the sink and we get some water. We know that that's just that definition of what thirst is. And so Jesus shows up at the well and he says that he's thirsty. But it becomes pretty clear immediately that the water he is talking about is not just H2O. It's not just the water from the tap. It's not just the water from the well. No, he's talking about nourishment, which is ultimately what water is. He is talking about nourishment, sustaining water, sustaining elements that go beyond H2O, that go beyond what we can get from a well, that go beyond what we can get from a tap. He's talking instead about the waters of eternal life, the waters that come to us through him, through his Father. And so what I'm intrigued by is he shows up to this well, to this random woman there. First off, she was a woman, so he wasn't really supposed to be talking with her. Second off, she was a Samaritan, so that was strike two. But he shows up anyway, and he speaks to her anyway, and he talks about this water anyway. And he makes it clear in doing so that the water he is seeking is not the water that that well can provide. And so why is he there? What is he doing? A few years ago, I went to Haiti on a mission trip. I was in my last year at Eastern, uh, where I went to college and went to graduate school. And I went to Haiti on a mission trip in my last semester there in December. We went right after Christmas. And about halfway through our trip, we'd been going all throughout the country into different towns and villages where uh, we had a presence uh, there in the country in different ministries and missions that we supported with our time and our town and our treasure, as we often talk about. And we were about halfway through the trip. And in this little village that we were in, they did not have a steady source of water in the nearby area. And so they had to go on a trek uh, usually they would go weekly to fill up their jugs from the one little spring that wasn't too far away, but was also kind of far enough away that it just, you know, wasn't in town. So we decided that it was water day just when we happened to be there. Um, so we were going to go with them. We were going to go with them to the little spring. So we, uh, we got our jugs together and we start on this walk. And they had told us, oh, it's very short. It won't take any time at all. Well, 45 minutes later, we arrived at the stream, and stream was generous. They'd been telling us, oh, yes, there's a great stream. Uh, you know, they had said nearby where, where we go to get our water. They said, we're very fortunate that we have access uh, to this stream. So we had walked 45 minutes, and we finally got there. 
And what this stream was that's, that provided water for that entire village, what this stream was was a faint little trickle that came out the side of a mountain. Faint little trickle. Like if you were to just go to your sink and just lightly tap it on and that just a little drizzle starts coming out, that was their water source for this entire village. That was their source of water. And so we stood there for the next two hours or so, slowly filling up the jugs that we had brought to fill. And that was the water for the week. That was the water for the week. The water that was to provide them with sustaining life. The water that was to provide them with nourishment. The water that was to provide them with cleanliness and all the sorts of things that we use water for and take for granted. They trekked 45 minutes for, for a steady little trickle, for a steady little trickle. Hmm. Then we hear this gospel, and we hear Jesus showing up at the well. We hear Jesus being that source of all that sustains us, of all that unites us, of all that quenches our thirst. What we learned that day as we traveled with them is we learned, yes, about their daily plight and the things that they had to do to just sustain their life, the things that we take for granted. But what we also learned a thing or two about that day was faith and was gratitude. Because as I said, they had told us how thankful they were for that faint little trickle. Oh, we're fortunate because we have that. We're fortunate because we have that as a gift to us from God, as a gift to us from God that sustains us, that nourishes our community, that we're able to have access to. How interesting. How interesting. Then we hear in our gospel passage today, we hear about this woman at the well. We hear about Jesus providing those gifts of water that ultimately sustain us, that ultimately quench our thirst. And I think it makes us think about, or at least what I hope it makes us think about, is that there's a lot to that. It's not so much about bodily nourishment, although it is. It's about what are we doing to quench our thirst? What trust and where are we planting our trust and who and in what are we placing our trust to quench our thirst? Those Haitians living in abject poverty were placing their trust in God to provide for their every need, were rejoicing over the fact that they have this simple trickle of water, this faint little trickle of water to sustain them. They gave thanks for, and they saw as nourishment, but it went beyond that. They saw their faith in Jesus Christ. They saw their membership in his church as what truly nourishes them of what truly sustains them. I think in our world, it's so easy to get that out of check, to get that our priorities out of order. We quench our thirst at the wells of all of the things in our society that stand in our way of relationship with God. We place our trust in the wells of sports and in the wells of Amazon checklists and in the wells of politicians that lie to us constantly and in the wells of so many other things that we prop up as idols. We place our trust, we place our thirst quenching at those wells that ultimately just leave us thirsty and desperate for more, and desperately seeking something different, something else, something more, and our thirst is left there. Our thirst is left present. Our thirst is left unquenched. So what our gospel is calling us to this morning, or this evening rather, is to see that the water that, that is provided to us by Christ is not just a faint little trickle. No, it is an overflowing abundance of faith. It's an over, overflowing abundance of love, of joy, of peace, and of mercy. And it comes to us right here. It comes to us right here among each other in this Mass as we join together to celebrate this Eucharist. When we unite ourselves with Him, when we drink from His well, which is filled with everlasting waters, life-sustaining waters, our thirst is quenched. 
when we unite ourselves wholly and fully to him in all things, keeping him and our faith as our top priority, he moves us deeper into his love. He moves us deeper into his peace. He moves us deeper into the joy and to the fulfillment that only he can provide. He moves us past the faint little trickle of what we trick ourselves into believing will quench our thirst and into that overflowing abundance of water that comes to us from him, that comes to us from him. And that Samaritan woman sitting at that well learned that that day. She learned that that day. She understood who he was, that he was the Messiah sent to save her. Yes, but also to save us. So our question, I think, tonight is relatively simple. What well are we sitting by? What fills our wells? Is what fills our wells something that will ultimately sustain us and ultimately nourish us? Or is what fills our wells exactly what is preventing us from deeper union with Christ, deeper relationship with his church, deeper relationship with who it is that he is calling us to be? Are we filling our wells with the mud and the muck of this world, filling our wells with the things of, of this world that we know will not ultimately satisfy us? Is that what we are filling our wells with? And if it is, today God is inviting us to sit at a different well, to move past the wells of this world, the wells full of lies, the wells full of things that inhibit our relationship with him, and move into the wells filled with his overflowing love for us, filled with his overflowing peace, mercy, and forgiveness for us, and to drink from that well. And the good news is, brothers and sisters, as we gather here, that well shows up on this altar. That well comes to us in that tiny little host as we come forward and say amen. That well comes into our lives and into our hearts and overflows it, overflows it. Our task is simple. We just have to acknowledge it and to give thanks for it, to like those Haitian people walking 45 minutes for a steady trickle to give gratitude and thanks for Jesus coming into our hearts, truly present, truly alive as we gather here this evening. I believe in one God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He is centered into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In confidence and in trust, we now turn to Christ in prayer, placing these our petitions at the seat of his mercy. For Pope Francis, may God grant him good health and continued wisdom as he leads the church on earth. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord for public officials, may God's grace enable them in using their talents for the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord for those preparing to enter the church, may God lift their burdens and remove any obstacles from their path. We pray to the Lord. Lord for all who worship in this place, may God's grace nourish and strengthen us this Lenten season. We pray to the Lord. Amen. For those who have died, that they may know the glory and the splendor of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Amen. For all of our special intentions, especially for the intention of this Mass, David Adam Oakley, we pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, in your love and in your mercy, we ask you to hear and answer these prayers if they be in accordance with your will. We ask this as we do all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our song for the preparation of the gifts can be found on page 441.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her, and so ardently did he thirst for her faith that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we too give you thanks and with the angels praise your mighty deeds as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather up people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of, his, of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. 
Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Peter and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas John, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. I say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
For running straight.
couple announcements this evening. First of all, we will not have Mass on Tuesday evening or Wednesday morning this week due to the priests being in Springfield. And also a reminder to consider a gift to the commitment weekend phase of the Q&D fund drive to support our Catholic high school students. You can place your envelope in the offertory or mail directly to Q&D. Thank you. Before we go, I'd just like to acknowledge our beautiful Scola this evening, who has so beautifully and masterfully, I might add, led us in song and sung prayer this evening. Thank you to Monica and to the whole Scola. Absolutely beautiful. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servants this grace that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying our Lord. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen.